you know, 10, 12 years ago with the advent of alternative data, with consumer spending data, exhaust data coming out, there was a tremendous amount of excitement around data, big data, how it could be used, how it's going to change the world. And here we are 12 years later uh, talking about AI, and there's this, by definition, uncertainty of what, what, what's going to happen, but such great expectations and excitement. So it's inter interesting to see that repeat itself a little bit, but of course AI is a different animal. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing today. We'll start with Peter Green from SRZ, co-head of the, their investment management practice. Just what you're seeing in terms of the lay of the land, early adoption, and what people are spending their time on there. Sure. Uh, so thanks for having me. Uh, I agree with what you said about, about this sort of just being data, alt data 2.0, right? It's just new technology. It's just new iteration of the same sets of issues or similar issues. So uh, I'm a funds lawyer, uh, fund formation and structuring lawyer for mostly hedge funds, but some closed end funds as well. So I think a year ago, we saw very little adoption in that people were afraid that their own proprietary information would somehow make its way into the public domain. They didn't necessarily understand the technology yet, and maybe they still don't to some extent, but I think the understanding is much stronger now. And so, as is often the case, the fund managers, from a regulatory perspective and from a protection of proprietary information perspective, were cautious. I think. Now, the last six months, we've seen much greater uptake and adoption. There's a continuum, of course. There's still some folks who I think who, who use it very little, and there are folks who use it a lot. But I think, and, and Roger and I were talking about this earlier, I think that still the adoption is less on the investment side of the house than it is on the non-investment side of the house. I think there, so far, people see better use cases on the non-investment side of the house. So what do I mean by that? Vendors, right? You need to pick a new vendor for order management. You need to pick a new vendor for HR. You can cover and analyze and digest a great deal of information with respect to possible service providers on the way and in choosing them. And then also, once they're there, on um, analyzing their performance. And I think if, if you want to get a good digest of, hey, here are the choices to give to a superior on the non-investment side, right, at someone up in the hierarchy, AI is a good way to do it. We're seeing a lot of adoption, and we're seeing that adoption internal, right? People are building it internally to do that work internally, so they don't have to have, have to expose any of their proprietary information to the outside just yet. It's not to say I don't, that we're not seeing it at all on the investment side. I think it is being used on the investment side, but I think it would be a bridge way too far to say that AI is making investment decisions. That's just at least from where I sit, I don't think that's happening yet. I don't think that's close to happening yet. It may move very quickly to there, but I don't think that's close to happening yet. Roger. Yeah, th thanks, Peter. O on that note, um, Roger Freeman from Newberger. Uh, I've known Roger for some time. He's a recovering fundamental analyst and now co-head of data science at uh, Newberger Berman. Maybe you could talk a little bit about how you're using it in your workflows and even give some examples of what we talked about around uh, the worker personification, colleagues uh, per personification in your LLMs and things like that. Uh, sure. Um, and I'll just pick up on what um, Peter was uh, talking about, too. Um, I completely agree that the, kind of the low-hanging fruit has been, uh, at least for us at Newberger, um, on the, you know, some of the more operational um, sort of one-task types of uh, use cases. The, uh, the firm, we jumped on the, you know, the generative AI um, you know, bandwagon, if you will, um, pretty early. It was at the beginning of last year, and, and the initial effort was one to, step one was wall it off, keep anyone from using it in the office, um, because it became pretty rampant pretty quickly. Uh, but, but fortunately, very quickly, we moved into a secure uh, environment in Azure, um, and build an internal chatbot, which we call NBGPT, very original. And um, it's basically the same thing, but now it's, it's uh, within our environment, um, and, it's, it, and, and it, it's able to accept um, proprietary firm content in the prompts without risk of, um, you know, of, of leakage. Uh, and, then, so, and then the firm's efforts around that have been to, to continue to expand its functionality to you know, be able to do you know, take Excel files, PDFs, uh, um, you know, emails, and, you know, and let users interact with them. Um, and, you know, 
it now has sort of the code interpreter functionality built into, so it can do some um, you know, some manipulations on Excel sheets, save them back to Excel. But they're you know these are kind of one sh you know one off um, you know one shot two shot types of uh, interactions, and certainly nothing used in as final output that's ever going out. So our the pol you know our policy at Newberger is the, the the human in the loop, the person, the user is responsible for anything, any content that's used. So in no way it is, and, and I, th I think it will be that way for um, the foreseeable future and probably beyond. I, I think to, to, to use any AI generated content as you know, anything going to, out to public clients uh, and whatnot. That said, um, within data science, we're, um, you know, our focus is on sort of the, what I would say the next level of uh, Gen AI usage, which is for investment analysis, um, you know, not for investment decision making, but as a you know as a tool to be used by um, investment teams, by our data science team, to uh, you know to to do financial analysis. Um, and you know, r again, right now, it's you know a lot of most of it's in, I would say is in sort of the R and D or prototyping phase. Um, it's still more, um, you know, sort of task oriented as opposed to say project management. But we're certainly going in that direction. Um, but we spent we've been spending a lot of time building some functionality to um, to help achieve the best possible responses on prompts, right? So you're not just stuck with the one shot, two shot. 